Episode 3, Scenario 8A of After the Storm, Interim. No objectives available. That is not entirely accurate. Of course, you do have more specific goals in mind tonight, the longest of nights on Erdia. Ever since you were brought back to life by the man who once was Uriah's first, you have done nothing but comply with the wishes of those responsible for your prolonged lifespan. Such is the price of cheating death, you think to yourself. But the seer told you about things to come. Things that did not make much sense to you at the time. Things you promptly disregarded as long-winded prophetic nonsense of the kind that necessitates a very specific mindset to digest and interpret correctly. Even after over 300 years, you cannot understand half of her ramblings and have forgotten most of the rest. Yet she sometimes does provide you clear instructions to follow. Darkness and its association with the matters of the mind are well understood by her as the descendant of Delethea she claims to be, and she willingly allows you to exploit that aspect and gnaw at her thick mental barrier when the situation calls for it. But instructions are all you ever find in the vast void of her thoughts. Executing commands as the machine you are is all you ever do, but you were promised a change. You have a couple of contracts to fulfil first, however. What will you do? Proceed to the meeting chamber. Okay, I can wander around. What stuff do I see? Some sort of vase, doesn't look too useful. Biomechanical Engineering Laboratory 03 crossed out. Facility condemned. No entry without permission from Lifeform Research Team Lead Mal Sia. And what's down here? Another one of those. Uh, can we go back up here? Yeah, we can. Okay. But it looks like that's impassable void. Alright, let's keep going. Ooh, nice. The Seer. Okay, activate the communicator. The Mother. The Fist. The Shadow. It is you. I believe you wanted to see me, my lady. That is correct. The preparations for my arrival on a fair been completed yet. I believe there is a certain nuisance remaining to be eliminated. I have been awaiting your order to destroy the gatekeeper, my lady. Hmm. Hmm. I appreciate your obedience, but in this case, I would have preferred it if you did it as soon as the breach was opened. I assumed you would wait until you gathered further information on the Guardian of Water, my lady. Is he not? Yes, he is already there. But he is not cognizant of our schemes, is he? His people never noticed the supplies and equipment we stole from their world. So I am free to advance my plans while they are preoccupied with other matters. Do not forget that I need to find the missing piece of that damned puzzle. The body. Will you please stop wasting everyone's time and destroy that hideous thing at once. Once you are done, come back to me. Yes, as you command, my lady. You guess it cannot be helped. Things are going to get more complicated than you wanted, as usual. These security measures are inconvenient at times. 
If that stupid fairy and her accomplices did not have access to teleport spells, you would be able to instantly go to the breach site and deal with your target. But it cannot be helped. The transport lift awaits. You really hope to not stumble upon any undesirable vermin along the way. Okay. Of course, you are not too concerned about it. What have we got down here? <laughs> Look, it's your eyes, little pet! Isn't she adorable? You are obstructing the way. Get out. As you wish. <laughs> What's down here? Nothing. There is stuff down here. Um, not that can be seen. What do you say? You don't say anything. There's some drones. That's not unusual for the Chaos Empire. Let's see what's down here. Just a long corridor leading into nothingness. And we head back up towards the glyph. Got friendly units. Friendly drones hiding in corners. Ooh, there's some sort of ring on the ground. An old rusted ring, with no special powers whatsoever. It is absolutely useless to you. The unnatural air in this place makes you feel uneasy. On the other side of the breach, the gatekeeper on Ethea awaits. There is no going back now. <gasps> Have you forgotten who you are? Are you deceiving yourself? Who are you? Who are you? I asked the question first. I was told gatekeepers are not sentient creatures. You let yourself be deceived by appearances in spite of the aspect you control. Why is that? As the child of Uriah and Heres of Merthial you are, you have a great potential. You are mistaken. I am neither thing. Are you not human? All humans everywhere are children of Uriah. I am not human. Not any more. The heart of Merthial lies within you as designed, but that does not change your true self. I was not destined by the tree to inherit darkness, but that's irrelevant either way. I have transcended the definition of a human, and become something different. Have you? What does your heart tell you? My... heart? The path of darkness is a convoluted and deceptive one, whereas your predecessor placed an excessive emphasis on her feelings to the detriment of rationality, you are doing the exact opposite. A true guardian of light or darkness needs to establish a balance between both facets. You, however, you have allowed others to distort your identity. Uriah's corrupting influence is hampering your personal growth and tearing your being apart just as she wants. Ooh, wow, you're looking like a right mess. Tearing souls apart is what a corrupted guardian of life does best. But can you escape her influence? Can you escape a destructive grasp? Before she utterly destroys your soul and seizes darkness through your empty shell. 
bind the soul to stone, turn the memories to dust, erase the spirit, get the hollow shell. <sighs> Damn you, Jangor. Damn you and your stinking lies. Of course, she was not counting on the spell Uriah taught you for the mission. Or was she? You have not felt so stupid in a long time. Jangor's ruse was simply too obvious to fall for. Uriah would not have asked you to destroy the gatekeeper yourself if she did not fear her for some reason. Perhaps if she had such an introspective conversation with the gatekeeper, things would have changed to some degree. Perhaps. But no. You are well familiarized with the demoness and her childlike stubbornness. Whatever advice the gatekeeper might have had for her would have gone unheeded. That is, assuming Uriah would have given her a chance to speak in the first place. Maybe you were too hasty in disposing of the creature, though. She seemed to be genuinely trying to help you for some reason. The illusion she cast on you seemed as real as it was intensely painful. Not that you are unaccustomed to pain yourself, but... You admit that you were afraid for a moment. Regardless of the intentions of Delethea's offspring, she managed to stir up uncomfortable thoughts in your mind with her meddling. You decide to sweep them aside, if only for a brief interval, while you go to report back to your oppressive overseer. Okay, back to the meeting chamber we go. <laughs> hey, hey! Did you have fun down there? <laughs> Not really. There was only one gatekeeper, and I was prepared to perform many more soulbind spells tonight. That seems rather wasteful and improbable. Lord Jangor said you needed Uriah's help to cast those. Jangor, you say? <laughs> ah, I see. Good to know it was he who sent you here, but I fear you have been misinformed about the power I wield. Regardless, I have to wonder. Why here, in my domain? Lord Jangor wanted us to keep you in check, naturally. There are various disturbing rumours running around surrounding your habits and plans, you see. Some say you like inviting people to dine in your cell. They say that you invite humans and demons to eat their succulent flesh when you are hungry! <laughs> Ha ha ha. I can see why some of you might believe such a thing, but trust me, I am not the one who revels in chaos, destruction, and depravity. Perhaps you should be watching him instead. Nonetheless, I absolutely detest your obnoxious laugh, girl. You grab the crystal orb containing the soul of your nameless victim and fling it against the wall, shattering it. The irregular shards are scattered over the floor. At least you believe she did not have a name. Ooh, Alyssa, that's cold. Uh. The leader seems quite impressed by your little demonstration and orders his minion to pick up the shards. Hopefully he will choose to leave you alone, you think. That spell is quite physically and mentally taxing and displaying weakness before Jangor's minions would not be a good idea. Lord Jangor will hear of this. Oh, excellent. How ever should I express my gratitude? I was actually worried for a moment that I would have to send him the shards all by myself, wasting Uriah's invaluable time by making her wait much longer for my report. Please do send him my regards. Okay, now those clowns have run away. What happens next? Oh, one question I always had. What what are these things? It looks like a wad of cotton wool with some spears sticking out of it. Oh well, maybe I'll never find out. The gatekeeper on Ithea is no more, my lady. 
The breach from Ovatha is now clear for you to cross. Hmm. Hmm. I see. Well done, my father. Your success pleases me greatly. Hmm. I have a question for you. Yes, my lady? Lord Jangor informed me earlier of a revolt organized by the storm kind which but from what he said i gather that the once blessed fairy is directly involved as well what do you know about this the fairy was supposed to lead the erdian troops from the north but abandoned her duty of the service before their arrival she made it to the ruined training chamber and confronted me mm, yes everyone had been looking forward to that confrontation ever since it was foretold by the seer. It was an inevitability. Well, I assume you made her pay dearly for her meddling. Is she? I killed her just as you wished, my lady. Hecuba's necrophages took care of the rest for me. I would have loved to present you with her corpse, but it appears that our decrepit traitor still manages to interfere even after his soul ceased to exist. A pity too, since I really liked her hair. Decrepit traitor, interesting. Who's this talking about? Um, is this talking about uh, Malhecuba, maybe? He somehow managed to keep the body alive or around. No, I would not tolerate you wearing the scalp of that wretched creature anywhere near me. Not to mention that some of your followers could get the wrong idea. Do you not think we have enough already with Ergea's betrayal? My apologies, my lady. Moving on. Yes, my lady? I have transferred Erge's control to Lord Jangor. You are relieved from your duty as my father. M my lady? I refuse to acknowledge your reaction as one of surprise, Elisa. Did you truly think I would ask you to lend him the bulk of the Triad's troops without an ulterior reason? This is all part of a plan that is now mostly irrelevant to you. Your duty now is to serve him just as you have served me all these years. But you promised that Erdia would be under my control soon. Django would assist you on Ithir. You ought to watch your tone, girl. Do not forget that I can end your life and destroy your soul at any time I please. If you want the ball of dirt you call Erdia, you will have to strike a bargain with your new lord. Do you understand? I understand, my lady. Excellent then. Mm -hmm. I am sure Django will be as pleased as I to count on your assistance with exterminating the vermin brought by the fairy. We will meet again in the future, perhaps. <laughs> Ooh, not a happy moment for uh, for old Alyssa. This, interestingly, this is the first time uh, we're in, you know, episode three of campaign two. This is the first time that the big bad really appears in the campaign. So we see Uriah, at least in this uh, smoky form. And we haven't seen her, even though she's been referred to since pretty much the start. So, yeah, face of the enemy, or woman behind the curtain at least. Although, having said that... Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one, and it's an interesting voice. I hope I don't have to do that too often, it's quite bad for my vocal cords. That damned shapeshifter scum should have stayed half dead in that putrid pit. Stupid Uriah and her irritating obsession with the bastard. You can only wonder what other machinations they have been brewing behind your back. This unexpected development changes many things. Your plans need some urgent adjustments before those two perform their next move. Time to check on your pivotal piece in the ruined laboratory. Maybe you should try to remember a few things along the way. Open some of those rusty gates in your memory and look inside. You just know you will need all the hints you can gather from this stronghold for your next course of action. Okay, that's the place to go, but I should look at some of these other ones first. 
Let's remind myself what these say. Um, well, they don't say anything anymore. So it was um, the mother, the fist, the shadow. I guess the fist is probably either Jangor or Narhamoth. Not all that clear. We don't know who's replaced, uh, whether Malkendry has been replaced, and who's replaced Malakiba, if anyone. Okay. So what's down here? Nothing. What's up here? Touch plate triggered. A road rises from the depths. Ooh, nice. Some glyphs. Okay. Backstory time. Life. The aspect of life deals primarily with the creation and sustainment of life, as well as the very essence of being and all of its manifestations. All non-fairy, human and human-like creatures were created in the image of the first guardian of life, who governed over Athea during the first cycle. This incarnation of Uriah would prove essential for defeating the corrupted Protector of the Tree by orchestrating the demise of Yare's allies at the cost of countless innocent lives elsewhere. Her next incarnation came into existence on a world other than Athea due to unknown reasons. Earth. The aspect of Earth is one of four aspects directly connected to life in a supporting role, paving the way for creation. All fairy kind creatures were created in the image of the first guardian of Earth, who was charged with the task of ruling over Erdia during the first cycle. Some sources claim that fairy kind beings were originally incorporeal and extremely rare until the ascension of the first incantation, uh, incarnation of CRL, a woman said to have been created out of golden dust by Yare himself, the protector of the tree. His influence might have brought her kind the boon of a more physical existence in greater numbers, albeit losing their immortality in the process. Various versions of the myth exist, some of them claiming that CRL's form was a favour granted by Yare after he fell in love with the creature. Her next incarnation came into existence on a world other than Erdia due to unknown reasons. Interesting, okay. So, is Earth the element that is associated with Elinia? Sorry, I'm a bit snuffly today for some reason. Okay, we can read here about all of the original ten. This nice little drop-down menu. Life. The force that governs the birth of all creatures in our reality, incarnated by the Guardian of Life, also known as Uriah. Guardian of the Legacy and the Void. Mistress of the Void. Goddess of Life. Water. The element common to the origins of all life in our reality, as well as its sustainment and destruction. Incarnated by the Guardian of Water, also known as Valdir. Guardian of Water and Destruction. The Beast. God of War. Okay, so we earlier read about Valdir having um, uh, stealing technology, or ha having technology stolen from him. Um, I wonder if Valdir is someone who's appeared in the campaign so far, or if that's just a hook that's left for future exploration. It might be that uh, that's linked with the Norsulans as well. I believe that's described as Norsulan technology. Thunder. The spark that keeps life in motion, the arbiter in a chaotic reality, doomed to an ephemeral eternity of strife. Incarnated by the Guardian of Thunder, also known as Karul, Guardian of Thunder, Harbinger of Judgment, and God of Storms. Related to our friend, somehow, Hergea? Earth. The shelter that harbors the promise of life, the energy that kindles the mystic in a dying reality. Incarnated by the Guardian of Earth, also known as Siael, Guardian of the Arcane Flame and Earth, Goddess of the Forests, Protector of Peace. Fire, the aspect that fuels life through love, the flame that sustains the forge of knowledge in a reality where ignorance has ensnared its hopeless dwellers. Incarnated by the Guardian of Fire, also known as Shardia, Guardian of Fire and Knowledge, the Fire of Hope, Goddess of Love. And we've come across Shardia before, and um, some of, even somewhere, in my recall list, there is a thug that has fire attacks because of a Shardia's Tears potion. Uh, so, hmm, interesting. Uh, obviously connected to Alyssa, how exactly we don't know. And maybe the Ruby of Fire as well. 
Darkness, the aspect of the free will necessary for life to progress, the precursor and successor of light in a reality devoid of ultimate intent. Incarnated by the Guardian of Darkness, also known as Murthial, Guardian of Darkness and Shadows, Eater of Souls, Goddess of Free Will. So that Murthial was Yechnagoth, was killed, and the heart was placed within Elissa. That's what else we know there. Light, the aspect of the constancy from which life springs. The successor and precursor of darkness in a reality unprepared for its end. Incarnated by the Guardian of Light, also known as Luciathal, Guardian of Light and Metal. Star of the Morning, Healer of Souls. Not something I think we know much about at this point, unless it's related to the Union, which it might well be. Air, the aspect of the kiss that insufflates life, the breath that preserves life in a decaying reality, incarnated by the Guardian of Air, also known as Kazeth, Guardian of Air and Breath. Lady of the Skies, Messenger of the Ether. Ice, the aspect that is the cold touch that ends life, the substance that holds treasures for those daring to explore the confines of a shrinking reality. Incarnated by the Guardian of Ice, also known as Eukirya, Guardian of Ice and Mirrors, Queen of the White Expanse, Keeper of Death. And finally, Existence, the aspect that binds all life together, the empty canvas from which a corrupted reality was created. Incarnated by the Guardian of Existence, also known as Delithia, Guardian of Secrets and Time, the Faceless Woman, Seer of the Tree. There is a question at this point whether the Seer is related to uh, Valen, who we met earlier in the campaign. A sort of fairly mysterious figure who may have ulterior motives. Could be a coincidence, but... Uh, would be narratively satisfying if it weren't. Okay, what else do we have here? Darkness. Unlike the majority of the aspects constituting reality, darkness and light are derived from the nature of the first gods themselves, stemming from existence, and connected to life in a structural role. Just like darkness precedes and succeeds light from a physical standpoint, it also deals with matters of the mind whereas light deals with the soul of every being born under the tree of life. However, just as both aspects complement each other, they may also exchange places according to the circumstances. Murthial, the guardian of darkness on Irithid, was the last guardian to be born during the first cycle, and at the same time she was the first guardian to perish. Although Yare's conflict had not yet begun, he did have an indirect role in causing Murthial's downfall. The young guardian's emotions clouded her reason. Jealousy consumed her heart from inside as she watched her creator's predilection for her sisters Uriah and Siael. In a desperate attempt to prove her worth to Yare, and even surpass his own power, the girl subverted her world's seed and tried to absorb its energy for herself. Alas, even though their blood was always one and the same, the Guardian and the Seed of Darkness were never meant to become one. Not having learned her own song beforehand, Murthyal could not assume full control of her new powers. Instead of becoming the true goddess she desired to be, the very aspect she controlled was destroyed. Her mind succumbed to insanity as her horrifying new body absorbed the souls of each and every one of her fellow Eratidians. Uriah put an end to Murthyal's rampage by ripping her heart out, destroying her body, and sealing herself in the hope that Yare could do something to remedy the situation. However, Yare was offended by the proposition. He refused to help with the resurrection and healing, choosing instead to preserve the lifeless world intact as a testament to his child's hubris. That incarnation of Uriah would never be able to bring Murthyal back to life, and the Guardian of Darkness would come to be known as the Eater of Souls, the antithesis of the Guardian of Light. Now lacking a distinct seed, Urathid would not be restored at the end of the first cycle, remaining instead a graveyard world per Yare's wishes. Okay, what's up here? Um, is there anything up here, in fact? Uh, doesn't look like it. These leeches aren't going to attack me, are they? No, good. Uh, just got to check down south. Looks like only walls. Yeah, I think I have explored everything over here. So we can go up. to the Condemned Biomechanical Engineering Laboratory, which has railway lines in it. 
particularly irksome disadvantage of living forever is that you very easily forget things that happened over a century ago if you do not take care to exercise your memory regularly. You are worried that this will become even harder over time, assuming you last long enough for that. While you prepare your next move, you decide to refresh your memory about some things. You make an effort to remember. It is him, the tortured man to whom you owe your life, even though you did not ask for it. The scene feels familiar to you, but you are not completely sure yet how long ago it happened. You have not visited me in a long time. What brings you here? Do I really need a reason? Your eye is busy unearthing some ruins on Urvatha. She will not notice my absence. I just wanted to see you. I have to admit that I expected a warmer reception. I suppose it's hard to be enthusiastic about a visit from someone who's only spoken to me through crystal projections for over a century. It almost feels as though we are strangers, meeting for the first time. Does it now? I missed you. I really, really did. But... I see... How have things been around here? Any progress? With Narhamoth around, I haven't been able to continue with my search, but I went to Gorumdul the other day and asked the seer about her, and... Not the fairy, the hive in the Grenmar region. I believe its construction should be nearly finished by now. Did you just come here to ask me about such banal matters, or because you wanted to see me? Do I have to choose between those two options? I did not expect you to be so demanding from your superiors, girl. Superiors, you say? I do not have all the time in the world for your empty questions. Will you answer, or...? Uriah sent you, didn't she? She sent you to keep track of my activities, as if I needed another shadow of hers around here. Oh, but of course, Shadow really suits you better than it does that brainless brute. Except most of the scum in this place prefers to add Master to it for some stupid reason. You seem agitated. Dealing with your personality issues was exasperating enough back then. I will not bear talking to you now that you've become a puppet of that abusive monster. Get out. Uh, Elisa. Get out! For long you have tried to purge your memories revolving around Argan's descent into insanity and the eventual fulfilment of his end of the bargain with Uriah. Alas, Nautil and technology around the time you were resurrected was not advanced enough to do that kind of thing, and you are sort of stuck in the past in that regard. Maybe someday you will learn to do the advanced mind tricks Murphy Isle could and use that power to alter or clear your own memory. Surely if you managed to do that, you could attain absolute control of every single creature on Erdia. You decide to proceed further into the ruined laboratory, and try to reminisce on better times. Some of the hive creatures have adopted these ruins as their home. You do not really mind them, since they are completely harmless around those whom they recognize as their own kind, by virtue of their identification signal mechanism. You are absolutely certain that, unlike the gatekeeper you just destroyed, these artificial creatures, artificial constructs, have no souls of their own. Whether they have minds or not is a completely different matter, though. Elissa, there is something I need to know. I thought I told you to go away. I'm not interested in helping you anymore. I need your help. Please. You are the only one I could ever trust who can use the powers of darkness to block the seer's vision. I need to find my wife. Why did you not try to find her before surrendering your free will to Uriah? If you truly love the Lady of Light, the first thing you should have done was... I already told you. 
I did not choose to be stranded on Urbatha for so long. Uriah does not want me to find Alinea yet. I am worried that her plans could jeopardize your own safety. You must do something for me. If you find Alinea, you must kill her. Why? Because it is something you must do. That is what I was told by the voice. You, you're in even worse shape than I thought. I simply cannot fathom what is going through Uriah's mind of late. Why would she trust you with the command of the Empire like this? No, listen, you can consult with the Seer later. I'm sure she knows of the voice as well, but she has always refused to speak with me. Ah, I have a suspicion about that voice. Does Uriah need to know? No. Very well then. I hope the Seer will not inform her about this, though. I do not think she has found out about your search yet, has she? You know the Seer is as much your ally as she is Uriah's. She does not take sides. She will not betray you, but not specifically because of your affiliation with Darkness. If that were all it took to communicate with her, I would not need your help with that. Many years later, Argan's orders would take a turn for the worst, and you would happily comply with every single one. You do not really regret it in the least. Killing lesser creatures is amazingly comforting after all you have been through. If only you could do that with your own underlings more often. Wait, you mean Jangor's are underlings now? You are quite sure he would not actually mind. On the other hand, you were allowed to do as you pleased with your torturers back in the day. If only you had the control you now have over your artificially enhanced body and Murthyar's heart. If only you could ravage people's minds like the true Eater of Souls did. If only. Alright, explore around a bit first. More drones. Oh, little secret passage. Empty chest. The chest is empty. It has been decades since the last time anyone used it to deliver parcels to you. Explored. Subject 0044A containment chamber. No entry without level 6 permission from Malzagan. I'll go through there. Gonna explore up here a bit. Nice cliff edge. You go around the worms. Nothing new up here. Anything in the box? Fungus box. Nope. Fallen thing? Skulls? No. Don't want to miss any narrative. This is where Argan brought you back to life. Or what remains of the place, in any case. You really threw a tantrum that night, blinded by the great pain caused by the energy seeping through your veins, and that unfathomable presence within Murthyal's heart, reaching into your soul. You were not entirely sure whether the pain ceased, or you just became accustomed to it over the years but you can still feel the presence on occasion, namely whenever you feel tempted to fully unleash your frustration and anger. The costs and risks of being a predestined guardian have not been properly documented, but everyone agrees that it was the temptation of power that finally got the best of the goddess whose legacy Argan and Uriah bestowed upon you. But your case is an unprecedented one, and you have had to cope with other difficulties along the way. The technology that binds your body and soul with Murthyal's heart was considered highly experimental on its world of origin and every test subject was destroyed without exception. Maybe it was because the heart they chose for their testing was that of an unborn goddess as opposed to a deceased one. Maybe it was because the aspect of fire itself did not choose them. Or maybe those individuals simply lacked the resolve and the initial excruciating pain was too much for their feeble psyches. Whichever the case, you are certain that even though cheating the system devised by Yare was a straining and arduous task, the aspect of darkness is now yours to control. If the once Lady of Light had not killed him, Argan would be proud to see you execute his plans like clockwork. Proud. Nothing more than that, really. If you were to use Golden Age literature as reference, you would say he always regarded you as a daughter. His increasing lack of empathy did not allow him to see that you had feelings of a different kind for him. While that truly bothered you in the beginning, you would soon learn of another cost of being a guardian. To put it into perspective, 
Of all the guardians that have lived so far, only the second incarnation of the Guardian of Fire found true love, and then she died under mysterious circumstances. Those unrequited feelings of yours vanished long ago, but that does not change the fact that you owe your life to Argan, and you will do everything within your power for him, even now that he is gone for good. Okay, now I've got to go back down there. It feels as though you have been wasting your time with this pointless introspective for months, even though it has obviously been just an hour. Well, 45 minutes actually. Damn the gatekeeper and the seer. Things would be much easier if you could just focus on commanding troops and killing opponents with complete disregard for ancient riddles and the absurd notion of fate. Barrel. Okay, nothing back here. Anything on the altar? Nope. Facility condemned. Former operating room. No entry without level 4 permission from the Iron Council. Here we go. Kendiari is still here as you left her. The fairy destroyed her body near the entrance to the abandoned Iron Council chamber. If you were to give the necromancer a new chance, you would have to give her a new body as well. She was rather entertaining to have around, but not particularly bright, and Narhamoth was abusing that to keep you under constant surveillance. You simply had to act before Jangor had a chance to take advantage of her as well. That's Malkendria. In a box. In a ball. You have not really spent as much time in this cell as you would if you were an ordinary creature. Thankfully, your body allows you to spend an indefinite amount of time without rest. You have tried sleeping on occasion, but ever since you were captured by the human scum in the capital, you have only had variations of the same recurring nightmares. You hoped your new life would allow you to have normal dreams again, but it has only been worse since then. You think it is finally time to go and put those plans in motion. You glance at your cell a last time to make sure you are not forgetting anything before leaving. Surely none of that trash on the floor is of any use to you. Eh, yeah, I want to go and look at the trash. Just trash that has been lying around for ages. You're not going to touch it. Who knows what kind of creatures have decided to make it their home. Kenjari's ward against necromantic spells. Very useful against mundane enemy necromancers. Absolutely useless against magic unleashed from a guardian of life. Such a shame. This is an old poetry book you found amongst some ruins unearthed in the Silverlands. You used to dedicate your life to collecting every single piece of history you could salvage from the many remnants of Golden Age civilizations, but after becoming a hybrid being, your interests changed drastically. Things like poetry became pointless, as they do not contribute to your plans in any way whatsoever. And yet, this book is still here. Yeah, let's pick up the book. You take the book. A few loose pages slide onto the floor, and you pick them up. Of course, these are the pages you took from Argan's journal, some time after he became irreversibly incoherent. I can't to see what they say. This broken slab of rock used to be your bed. Last time you slept on it, you had a little accident due to your nightmares. It did not make for the most comfortable sleeping surface in the first place, but now you are pretty sure it would be greatly unadvisable for you to spend any significant amount of time lying on it. Not that your back would resent it enough to suffer any kind of permanent injury anyway. Your ability to regenerate biological parts is pretty intentionally limited compared to a naturally born guardian, but you are still far sturdier than your pitiful victim here thanks to the various enhancements they made to your body. You suppose there are some advantages to having been disemboweled and implanted with an unnatural power source after all. This stuff really is trash. What's back here? Little passageway leading to nowhere. That was a ball. Kendiara seems much brighter now than she did in life. You would take the poor woman with you. But it is probably safer here. Presumably no one will ever find her, and you will never have to worry about deciding her deciding to wreak revenge on you for sweeping her out of the way like that. She is just going to spend an eternity here being even more useless than usual, assuming the place does not collapse first. That is not a troubling notion in the least, you tell yourself. Anything down here? 
over here. No, that's blocked. Okay. I need to find a touch plate. Oh, there we go. It's glowing. That's helpful of it. Once you enter that room, there will be no going back. Are you sure you want to proceed now? Yes. Touch plate triggered. A wall moves. This is all your fault, Argan. I shouldn't be the one to deal with this. And there we are. The end of scenario 8A. That was the scenario interim. And we're going to do the beginning of scenario 8B, Destiny, part one. And we're going to see how it goes until we get into the action, and then I'm going to pause, and uh, we'll stop there for now. I'm not sure this is a good idea. This fortress is key to the defense of the Kalari region and guards an entrance to the underground complex. If we intend to assist Elinia. I know, I know. It just seems such a contrived plan. Do we have any idea who controls it at this particular time? No. Durfin is meeting us with us again soon. Let's not waste any more of his time. Fair enough. Okay, so we have to defeat all enemy leaders to seize the keep, and we've got Durvan's troops again. Interesting. Well, I am going to pause it here, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.